So in, earlier on, we looked at the effects on hemoglobin, and we've seen that after breath holding, the hemoglobin increased and peaked at three hours, and then returned to baseline two, two hours later. Here they looked at the long-term effects of breath holding. And they found that the resting hemoglobin mass in trained divers was 5% higher than untrained. Because breath hold divers, their objective is that they're holding their breath to stay underwater for as long as they can. So when they measured their hemoglobin, they found that during rest, without, without apneas, like this is their normal level of hemoglobin is higher. And the paper notes that the long-term effect of apnea training on hemoglobin mass might be implicated in elite divers' performance. So we, we're, you know, can we deduce from this that if you have an athlete who's doing regular breath holding, it's going to improve their hemoglobin mass on a continuous basis as long as they continue with the breath holding. So pre-test hemoglobin tended to be higher in the diver group versus both skiers and untrained. And the interesting thing about this is that the skiers were from the Swedish national team. The untrained individuals had higher hemoglobin than the skiers, which is very interesting. Because higher hemoglobin should be reflective of increased VO2 max, increased oxygen carrying capacity. So I don't have the answer to that one.